Hello, my name is uh, Adrien Merigeau and I directed a short film called Genius Loki and it's uh, in competition in Berlinale Shorts, uh, the screening number five and I'm honored to be here. S'ouvrir. Étoile. Peut-être. Être sous l'eau, ensemble. Allure. Alarme. Une alarme. On trouve. Brut. Je vais rester assise. Attendre un peu. Un signe. Hi and welcome to the 34th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig and I'm here with director Adrien Merigeau to discuss his film Genius Loki. Hi and welcome to the festival. Thank you so much. Hello. Okay. Hey, I, I enjoyed your movie a lot. I thought there was this really cool look of sort of, you know, that, that merging of, of art and that merging of kind of characters sort of into other objects, into other spaces. In, created kind of like this dreamlike atmosphere in certain places. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Thank you could, you so yeah, of course. Um, maybe you could start with telling us how that production came about, like how, how you created that art, how you created the, the, the how do you mm. use the craft? Um, the overall like art direction of the film, uh, I thought would be based uh, on uh, how you make a sketchbook a little bit. Uh, I wanted the pictures to be really dynamic in the way that sometimes some pages or some images are like really uh, small sketches and small intentions and the next image is like some full-blown kind of image that's really full of color and full of um, details because uh, it felt to me like um, sketchbook had this inherent co coherence of like narration that is not like so uh, clear but it's still like really naturally uh, coherent just because it's like a certain person at a certain time that expresses like certain types of ideas uh, that can be like really intimate and really strong and stuff and the whole kind of um, picture that it makes you know like uh, uh, going from like really intimate thoughts to like a really kind of like big thought and uh, mixing that with like um, like different types of sketches was making was helping tell a story from like a, a first person point of view and a really kind of like um, uh, you say like uh, a natural organic way of telling the story so like the visuals were done a bit like that way and, and I really like the freedom that that I had to like think about each shot individually kind of like trying to uh, see um, what kind of like uh, kind of poetic image we could we could we could uh, do with uh, each scene and the way uh, the way that uh, the dynamic it, it creates and the attention that it creates uh, through the film, I thought it was it was good to to work with that. But um, also, it's uh, like the film is about like abandon, and it's all, uh, also about being distracted. Mm -hmm. And I thought like the the idea to like scatter the composition and have sometimes no background, sometimes work on like white paper uh, was helping that idea of like distraction and mm -hmm. and the ambulation like going around things and over things and being distracted by different things at different times. Yeah. And it, it, it kind of uh, starts in that way with a sort of a voiceover mm -hmm. of that, that um, poetry that Ren mm -hmm. creates, which is sort of uh, étoile peut-être, like yeah. stars perhaps, if we drown together. Um, um, maybe you could explain a little bit what your idea was to, to build that poetry in there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it was really important for me to have that poem at the start. Although it feels like it's uh, quite spontaneous, I thought um, it was really important to introduce the fact that she just thinks about words uh, on their own, like without their meaning. Because the idea of the film is to consider the things around you without their function and what, without their meaning. Like when things get broken, when things get abandoned, like what presence they have in the world and how you can look at them and observe them without their uh, uh, primary function. And so, um, in, in a bit like you listen to, to music in some way, like um, I was really influenced by this composer called John Cage. Uh, my parents are musicians and they made the music for the film and they kind of, they are really heavily influenced by his philosophy that sounds and music are the same. It's just the listening yeah. that starts and stops. And so to consider like a sounds of the city or, or use 
like useful sounds kind of of cars and stuff as if it was music. Uh, it was this exact same idea that I wanted to have in the film that like things around her are um, like movements mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and uh, phenomenon or something. And so to start the film with like having this this poetry that she writes as if she was just listening to the words and like going into like a, a rhythm or a mood of like the sounds and the images that it makes naturally. Um, it was something that I really wanted to have. Yeah. But it was uh, interesting to write them because they have no meaning somehow. So we had ju I just had to have this, this words come to us. Yeah, so it was yeah. really nice. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. So you basically took the words by themselves and, and sort of tried to find out how they sound in a way, yeah, yeah. sort of, without kind of connecting them. Yeah, yeah. In a sense. And yeah. also to introduce the fact that she was a poet in the film and that she was looking uh, uh, at the things around her in uh, this way, yeah, yeah. in yeah. like an absorbing way, like a creative way, kind of yeah. thing. Um, <clears throat> and you, you um, pointed to that a little earlier. There's, there's this kind of theme of being destroyed, that kind of theme of chaos. Which at the end, I mean, that's that's kind of like a big headline, but yeah. um, there there seems to be some some idea of sort of a mental mental problem there yeah. because uh, Ren comes back home and basically her her sister kind of comforts her yeah. in a way that you're in charge, you know. Yeah. Um, could you maybe expand a little about that about yeah. that theme of chaos and? Yeah, yeah. It was about like um, how things when they are. Kind of like the cracking things, like the destruction of things, kind of change their their meaning in some way, you know, and so it creates like the the. It was a bit hard to explain, really. So that's why it took me so long to to write it this film. But um, uh, the idea was that uh, in the movement of chaos, in things kind of breaking, destructing, like overflowing, uh, and losing their meaning, there was a movement that was uh, a unity. Like that was always, especially in the city, but also in nature. There's like a flow that is like a, um, kind of um, coherent, and that coherence was, um, if you observe it or, or meditate on it, kind of gives birth to some kind of spirituality. And uh, so for me, it was more talking about this and kind of less about mental illness. Although it's it's like, of course, it was there because if you. Um, you talk about somebody like it's a character. Of, even if it's animation, it's a character that you bring to life. Yeah. And so um, uh, it was also kind of influenced by some friends of mine. And in in retrospect, maybe they had they were suffering from some kind of mental illness in some way, uh, or that person specifically. So I, I tried to focus on the symbolic elements and like fairy tale kind of elements mm -hmm. of the narration and like the. Uh, metaphysical elements of the narration and less on the mental illness elements because it felt like this was a really serious subject yeah. that had to be addressed <laughs> like a, a bit like medically or scientifically or with like a heavy respect yeah. for the people who uh, studied it, study it or, or suffer from it and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was like, um, yeah, but I know that it's, it's an aspect of the film mm -hmm. and, uh, and this idea of like chaos was, yes, to, to it was to make a comparison between the flow of the city and the flow of nature, like the movement of nature that has no meaning, and the flow of the city that uh, yeah. that that can be superposed and that can be kind of uh, experienced a bit the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of felt that uh, when Ren kind of uh, uh, um, uh, she she um, she breaks that that uh, glass of water, yeah. and then there's kind of like the sound, the swelling up of the of the water flowing, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. and then basically that's where she gets out, and then it kind of transforms into the rush or the the flow of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And eventually she turns herself into like a, a, an animal when she gets really upset, and chaos gets inside of her. Maybe I'm spoiling the film a little bit here, oh, no. but there's more, there's more to it. Um, but uh, I like the idea that um, she became part of nature in some way, like she was looking for nature in the city and she became part of it in some way, although it was maybe not the right moment to, to do that in the film, like for her, I mean, um, because she was connecting with someone. Um, so yeah, I'm saying slightly too much here, but um, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like if, if there's any point of the movie that you don't want to talk about, that's that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that and was a bit too much. Maybe to talk about this, but I don't um, know. It's 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 fine for us. Okay, great. But, but uh, um, like if 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 you don't <laughs> want to, that's that's also completely fine. Okay, okay. Um, I don't I don't really mind. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, 
um, there is this, I don't know if, if that has a specific meaning actually, but I, I just gotta ask, there's this symbol of two triangles kind of put together, like a black and a yeah, white yeah, one. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. If there, is there any special significance? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah, I was trying to work with that for um, my main point of reference for, for the spirituality element of the film. There's like, um, there's like a, a force or some kind of guide that, uh, that she's following in the chaos of that city, and it's represented by that uh, losange in French, I don't know how you say it, in, if it's the same word in German or in English. Yeah. Losange is like, um, is like a squished uh, square and tilted on the side. Okay, yeah. And, um, like a, we, uh, Raute is the, the, yeah. the German term. Okay, yeah. Actually, I don't know what the English term is. I mean, it's a, <laughs> yeah. a trapeze, no, it's not that. Well, anyway, um, it's like, yeah, it's representing the eye of that uh, spirit in some way. I didn't want it to be so literal in the film that it was so obvious, but uh, I used it as a point of reference for me to, um, to have that presence in the film when mm -hmm. I needed it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and there's sort of um, an idea of, well, maybe you could call it privilege in a way, yeah. um, because uh, the main character is supposed to be black, and there's also this, this um, queer relationship that she has and that she kind of runs away from, yeah. in a sense, because she says, like, you can never be yourself with these people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, what, 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 what is your kind of idea behind mm, putting it this way? So. Um, um, so there's a few things I, I wanted to explore with that, with that connection with these two girls who meet uh, in, the, in the church. Um, I, I wanted them to have like a, a mutual, um, uh, not awe, but uh, not respect, but uh, what's the word? A mutual uh, admiration. Admiration. Thank you so much. Uh, that's it uh, for what they do in the way that uh, the main character Ren, he's uh, following something kind of like intuitively, mm -hmm. and the white girl Rosie. She's uh, more like a, kind of in a school kind of like system, and she studies that. Mm -hmm. So, and she's kind of more like uh, um, following that, but um, more intellectually or something yeah. like this. And that they both have like mutual kind of admiration for it, and also uh, some kind of uh, yeah, I wanted them to connect in a deeper way mm -hmm. as well than just yeah. that, that 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 thing, and and also to. Have that kind of like nice size kind of moment <laughs> <laughs> with the two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that it was like um, something that they find in each other, and because all, because the main character is is uh, quite distant from everything, mm -hmm. and she uses that distance uh, to feel kind of strong because she's in an environment that's quite hostile, yeah. and to use that distance of like seeing things like fall apart or like breaking, and and finding pleasure in it is a way to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when she meets that person in the church, that other person, that's the first time that she's actually really wanting, wanting to connect with yeah, someone and yeah. she's like admiring because she arrives and she plays music the way girl Rosie and she's like connecting with that music a lot mm -hmm. and she's connected with her before and uh, she likes to have that, um, that, that charisma towards that, um, the, the musician, the white girl, yeah. uh, Rosie. And, um, and when things, like it's the, the turning point of the film when she, she really uh, cares for that meeting that her spiritual journey kind of catch, catches up with her. And, uh, and she cannot stop it at that time. And she gets, she gets angry and frustrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, most of the time, I think, when you're angry at yourself, you project on other people, and you're like, I'm good, but those people are horrible. Yeah. And, um, and that was something that I wanted to, 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 to do, yeah. yeah. And then she meets, well, when, and then she meets like, her sister, and with her sister, it's like, it's like another um, a comfort, so she gets she gets okay. But uh, to have that that connection that kind of just misses was important for me in the yeah. film, so that yeah. she gets um, she gets uh, emotionally invested and not like distant and and protected like she's at the rest of the, at the first part. So basically, when when she gets invested in that co emotional connection, she's sort of jumping out of the flow of her own sort of. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she becomes kind of like uh, vulnerable again, mm. you know, and she's kind yeah. of like attached and stuff yeah, like this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I found that that scene was incredibly well done because that it was um, that was such a good representation of sort of like in part like sort of a mental kind of breakdown, but mm. also sort of that that kind of like chaos 
mm. that that flow sort of overwhelming her. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. And and sort of what what she wants is kind of conflicted in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought it's like something that I've seen in people sometimes when um, they have like they kind of struggle to. Um, to, to keep like their own demons away kind of mm. thing, you know, like in connection and stuff like that. And, yeah. uh, and the struggle of like trying to be present and to be like uh, available mm. and in having something that's like eating you, not yeah. eating you, but like changing you inside. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah. And I found that um, I, I've seen old fangs as well. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> and uh, I found there was quite a, I mean, that's, that's my opinion, obviously, but um, I found it was quite a, um, a development there mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the way that is, uh, that that now uh, Genius Loki is, is much more sort of introspective in a yeah. sense, and, yeah, but yeah. at the same time kind of more playful in a mm -hmm. way that it you know like all these images merge and it's sort of like a dream-like uh, collage of yeah. of um, of things. Um, did did you find that as well? Like did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because it's like ten years apart, nearly. Yeah. Uh, old things. Uh, I finished it in 2010, and. Um, uh, it, I use a like a visual language that is, is more like uh, closer to like a Yuri Norstein or like um, um, like kind of a more classic kind of uh, animation fairy tale stuff that I really love as well. But for this one, I wanted to develop like a really personal language, and I thought it was um, way more interesting uh, in that time, like now in my life, to try and develop a, a language that is really um, how do you say that feels kind of personal, that feels like. Um, you don't have so much vocabulary or you don't have so much ways of expressing things. Maybe it's not clear, not as clear mm -hmm. to, uh, to an audience or something like this. But uh, the process of research of how to combine images, like uh, different ways of framing and of uh, structuring the film, I thought it was uh, really amazing to work uh, with that um, compared to my first short film where uh, I also really liked it, but it was more um, like a, a kind of universal uh, animation language or something. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think it's really interesting, especially now that uh, I live in Paris and in France, uh, there's a lot of bridges that are made between contemporary art, uh, graphic design, animation, um, even architecture and dance, and uh, so many mediums that uh, develop a language that is like so fascinating yeah. and with animation to build bridges with all yeah. those uh, different types of languages as well yeah. is, uh, is really fascinating to yeah. me. Yeah, so there's kind of a new pool of inspiration that you have right now. Yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, to see other like also comic books like uh, kind of um, underground comic books, they mm -hmm. do something that's super radical and super nice and to try and, and push a language in animation as well mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, quite unique to animation and also uh, that tries to uh, say things in a bit of a different way. It's uh, really fascinating to me. Yeah, I think yeah. we're in a really good period now to, to do that um, because like uh, things get shared so much and uh, things get inspired so much. Mm -hmm. And in France, there's also a really nice um, public funding for uh, making animation film. Um, I think it's a really exciting time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. I think that's it from me. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's it my really pleasure. Thank you yeah, so much for hosting yeah, me. It's really, really cool. <laughs> and thanks for the beautiful questions. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs>